This is Darius. I'm here at Museo Barocco. It's one of the Musei in Comune. And I was able to go to a new opening because underneath this extraordinary free museum, you now have access after 20 years to a fourth century domus. Now, what is a domus doing here in the Campus Martius? It's a place famous for all kinds of public monuments. The Stadium Domitian is just across the street, Piazza Navona. Down the street is Campo di Fiori. Well, let's explore the mystery of this 4th century domus right underneath my feet. Let's take a look here at Museo Baracco, which was originally built in the 1520s, known as Palazzo Regis, or the Farnese ai Ballari. But the collection of Giovanni Baracco was given in 1902 to the city of Rome, and that collection of artwork that we see here is actually housed in this palazzo in 1948. Assyrian art, Egyptian art, Etruscan art, Cyprian art here is a great milk art. Many examples of Greek statuary, reproductions in the Roman era. It's a fantastic collection that's free and accessible to the public daily. Roman mosaics, even this medieval mosaic from the first phase of St. Peter's and exquisite Palmyran portraits. Let's now go underneath the discovery that was made in 1899, four meters beneath the modern pavement. We can explore this fourth century AD domus. Now part of your experience when you go to Museo Baracco, and it's always fantastic to explore the underbelly of ancient Rome, those layers of history, in this case bringing us into a window of the life of 4th century AD Rome. So we're talking about Constantinian Rome. And what we see here amidst the many modern brickwork walls is a lot of reused imperial era marble, columns, architraves, all used to decorate this fourth century domus. And what we're really seeing here is portions of a courtyard. So you have a series of columns that align around an open space. We're walking through what originally would have been that open space. And we see lots of columns and we actually see capitals that are flipped around and now used as bases for those reused columns. So there's a lot of spolia for an open colonnade that over time we can see here the open spaces are filled in with fourth century construction of walls reutilizing fragments of brick and blocks of tuff. We can start to ask, what was the purpose of this domus? What was its use for? Who were the occupants? Here we are in a rather central area of the Campus Martius, the grand floodplain of Rome. that was filled with all kinds of monumental structures. Just across the way is Piazza Navona, the Stadium of Domitian. So we have a lot of public spaces here, but we can see whatever the nature of this domus is, it certainly was exquisite. Here is a glorious basin of Cipollino marble, so Christian green. So you have many refined components of a spectacular house. We can think about privacy, the private uses of this house, as well as the public. This seems to be quite public, quite grand. Here's our opus sectile floor work with Greek, Turkish, Spanish marbles that are then recut into a new original design. And again, we can see just how much craftsmanship is involved in the decoration of this domus. Of course, it's a limited excavation based upon the realities of the buildings atop. But here we get one little section of a curve of a 
column, which has been sliced and used as pavement. We can see here this marble basin. And we can see how the uh, excavation just stops due to the limitations of what is possible to excavate. And we have these details like this mensa ponderaria. So it's a dry measure weight system here. These cuttings into the block of stone are then for uh, measuring out various kinds of dry goods. So we can think about activities that took place inside this domus. Again, that would be a very public feature and process. And it's just a, a window into the grandeur that still was possible to experience in Constantinian Rome, no longer the capital of the empire, but exquisite nonetheless. Now, there are also in the museum on display the frescoes dating to the fourth century that would have once decorated this domus. We have scenes of fishing. Fishermen in little skiffs. And we also have scenes of hunts. In particular, we have a horse pursuing then this beast, which has been identified as a tiger. You can see the haunches and the tail. And here we have a scene probably of hunting deer. So do these clue us into the nature and the purpose of this domus? These are the big questions. We're going to turn to the lives of the charioteers to get more information about our fourth century domus. Now the charioteers were racing in the Circus Maximus, the most famous racing venue in ancient Roman times, but also in the Trigarium. The Trigarium was an equestrian training ground known for the Triga, three horse pull chariot, versus the Quadriga in the Circus Maximus. And it's around the vicinity of the Trigarium that you had the location, according to literary sources and inscriptional evidence, you had the location of the four stables of the companies. And these are the principal teams that raced in the Circus Maximus in the Trigaria. And we have a wonderful third century Severan era mosaic from Baccano, a villa several miles outside of Rome in the Cassia, that show a charioteer from each of the four principal factions or companies. And they're identified by colors. There was the Veneta faction, the blue team. There was the Albata factio, the white company. There was the red, Rusea factio. And the most popular one of all historically is the factio Prasina, the green company. Now, many emperors favored the green team, most famously Caligula, who actually built a special ivory inlaid stable for his champion horse, Incitatis, of the Green Company. Now we have a lot of incredible information, archaeological, about the whereabouts of the four companies. Now they're nearby the Trigarium, according to a lot of inscriptional evidence. There's even a fragment of the former Urbis that is identified as Vicus Stabularius, referring to the stables. We have mosaics underneath the Palazzo Farnese, that indicates a horsework activity and acrobats riding on horses. We also have a wealth of inscriptions around the area of Palazzo Cancelleria. Now, there you have the construction of the first version of San Lorenzo in Damaso by the Pope of 366 to 384, Pope Damasus. And we're told that his construction, his property is in Prasino. So this is referring then to the green faction, the green company, kind of the smoking gun here. And we have then within the nexus of these inscriptions and these various mosaics and the location of the Trigarium and of course the localization of the stables somewhere in the 
Campus Martius area, then a lot of great convincing evidence, circumstantial evidence that locates all four stables within the vicinity of the Factio Prasina, where we know was located then in the remains underneath of Palazzo Cancelleria. And then just a stone's throw away, let's not forget we have that 4th century domus under Museo Paracco. So we can take a look at the neighborhood from Palazzo Farnese there in the distance, past uh, Capellari and in the Capo di Fiori, over to the Palazzo Cancelleria, built with a lot of stone from the Theater of Pompey. And this 15th century Palazzo has incorporated within its lovely facade the remains of the later version of San Lorenzo. And here it is, glorious, hidden away by the big uh, facade of travertine stone. But it's here underneath, you have that property owned by the Pope Damasus, referring then to the green company he was a patron of. And in the distance, a stone's throw away, is our Museo Baracco. Underneath, it's a fourth century domus, but it was originally some sort of public structure. Quite potentially then, it's still part of the stables of the Green Company. And there you have it, the mystery of the fourth century domus underneath Museo Baracco. Thanks for tuning in. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. New adventures happening every week from Rome and throughout the Mediterranean.